Hey everybody, I'm Mary and this is my simple cottage life. Hey everybody, I just got through having the longest night of my life. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, I was talking to my son about the light in my kitchen. And now, it had a ceiling fan up there and a light underneath that, and both of them had pull cords, pull chains. There wasn't any other way to turn them off and on except for those pull chains. Well, the pull chain got broken off down in the light. And so what I've been having to do is get a little ladder and step up on this ladder and reach up and unscrew that light bulb when I'd go to bed. I'll show you Baba. Unscrew that light bulb to go to bed, and then in the morning I get on that ladder, get up there, do that. Well, my son didn't like that. He he knew that that was not safe, and it it was getting unsafe. And also, not just that, but the last couple of days, when I'd screw that light in, it would get real bright, and then dim, and then bright and dim. And I'm thinking something's wrong with this fixture. So he came down and he figured there was something wrong with the fixture as well. So he took it down and he went and bought another light fixture for me. Well, he bought one of those long bars, uh, fluorescent thing, which would give me a whole lot more light in there. I'm getting to where I can't see, couldn't see in there anyway with just that one little light bulb. And he thought this would be the best thing. Well, it didn't have a pull chain, but what it did have was uh, motion detection. And I thought that's kind of cool. I can go in the kitchen, kind of wave my arm, and my light comes on, you know. So he's installing that thing, and it was a booger bear to get that thing up there, screwing this on and screwing that on. And he got it wired up. Now, he's not an electrician, and he is afraid of electricity, rightfully so. You should always be afraid of electricity, even if you're a master electrician. Because years ago, we had a friend who was a master electrician, and he fell into his, fell into the breaker box or whatever it was. Anyway. My son is not happy working on electricity, but he figured he could do this light switch, this light up there. So he gets it back up there, he gets it on there, the new light, and it comes on, and he goes out, he wants to push this wires up in this hole, so that it had a whole bunch of long wires. So he goes outside again, he turns it off at the breaker, and he goes and he pushes the light the wires up in the ceiling, goes back out, turns the breaker on, nothing. No power whatsoever. 
Well, he looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. He called a few friends here and there and this and that. And the breaker, the main breaker that's right up uh, in the box, right under the uh, power, the meter, the, the meter, looked like it had been there a thousand years. It was just really corroded and, and you know, it looked bad. And it was broken and it wouldn't stay on. He'd push it and it would come back off. So that's what's been happening all this time. It wasn't necessarily the light fixture itself that was wrong. It was that breaker. So everything in the house at one point would have kind of a surge of on and off a little surge and I, I wasn't noticing it. I just didn't notice it. But that's what it was and it was the main breaker that was going out on its last leg. So it's too late and we can't get an electrician. It is Sunday evening. I have to be up at court the next morning for jury duty. And I have to be there by 8.30. And my son is like, Mom, I'm gonna get you a hotel room. And you can stay in a hotel tonight. You can take your dogs with you and stay in a hotel. And I'm not gonna do that. Nope, I said, I'm not gonna do that. Uh-uh. He goes, well, you can come down to my house. I've got a guest room, you can bring your dogs. Nope, he's got two big dogs. I'm not taking my little dogs down there. Appreciate it, I really do, I do. But no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I can, I think I can do this. I think I'll be okay. I got plenty of blankets and I can do this. Well, he was very sad. He was very worried. And he walks out the door to go home and his, his shoulders are down and his head is down. And I know he feels defeated and he feels defeated for me and he feels bad for his mama. And he knows it's gonna be down in the 20s and it was. It was 26 degrees during the night. And we had, he comes back in about 30 minutes and he's got all kinds of stuff. He's got a big down comforter and he's got uh, this uh, gloves and this thing I've got on right here. See, there's the hunting, a hunting thing. <laughs> And it had pants. It had these big pants to it and all that. But boy, this thing is warm. I see why hunters wear them. He comes back with these uh, sticks that you that glow in the dark and fire, uh, just all kinds of stuff to bring to me. And then he goes home. And a little later, I text him and I said, I'm fine, I'm toasty warm, I'm all wrapped up in my covers, the dogs are here, we're doing fine, honestly, don't worry. Well, during the night, as long as you're laying there and you're not moving and you've got two little dogs crammed on you and you've got all these covers, it's not so bad. But the minute one of the dogs gets up or you have to get up in the middle of the night, at age 73, you do sometimes have to get up. Then you're, then you're cold. You're cold and it takes you forever to warm up again. Well, I set my alarm on my phone for 7 a.m. I didn't need to set the alarm. It's like I never went to sleep. It just, it, you're laying there and you're freezing. You think you're gonna freeze to death. And I was warm honestly there but like I said the air around me my nose my fingers uh, man I thought I was gonna freeze to death I really did this morning when I got up whoo, I had to run and get dressed and there was no hot water no shower I thought those people are gonna I feel so sorry for those people that's going to be on that jury selection having to sit next to me couldn't do anything with my hair at all had to brush my teeth with frozen water uh it was awful it, i mean it was awful no coffee that that's horrible no coffee so i got out under the carport and my key fob wouldn't work that opens the door 
so I have to go back in the house and get this little flashlight thing and I have to open this key fob and it's got a key in it and so I go and I unlock the car well it unlocked the car all right but the door wouldn't open and it, it's my it's my guess I'm gonna go find out right now it's my guess that it was frozen it had to be frozen it would not open the car wouldn't open Still not opening. I'm gonna have to get my keys. I thought I had it unlocked, but I guess I did. I'll try that in a minute. I sure hope that's not the case. That there's something wrong with the battery. Oh, great day. Anyway, so that that's that. It didn't it didn't open. I couldn't go in the car. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is the continuation of the story I'm sorry but my son wanted to know what happened uh, did the guys come and all that stuff and then so I had to stop my video and uh, tell him what was going on so anyway I'm gonna tell y'all uh, if I can remember where where I was oh so I know I've got to go, you know, I've got to go to the uh, jury selection thing. And they're going to, I figure, well, they might as well just come arrest me. Just come arrest me because I'm telling you, <laughs> everything that could go wrong went wrong. And I can't make it to jury duty. And I went online and I got the numbers for the district clerk's office. And I called, and it was a few minutes after 8, I think. And this nice lady was there, and I talked to her, and I told her the whole stupid Laurel and Hardy story. Like some kind of Keystone Cop thing. And uh, she said, well, give me your jury number. And I gave it to her, and she said, I'll just take it off, and don't worry about it. And I said, okay. <laughs> Woo. So... I did not get arrested. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been something? Anyway, so I did that. I felt better. Felt better. The guys showed up. They were nice as they could be. Oh my gosh. Let me see. I'm going to get the. Well, shoot. I started to say I'll get the name of that up because they're coming back on the 16th to finish the job. Uh, what they did is they came out and I showed them around everything and y'all they're having to climb over ladders and climb over cat bowls and climb over move around tables and I'm, I'm sure they're going good good grief what's she having in there some kind of rummage sale but <laughs> it was a mess she could not move in this kitchen it was terrible huh? I'm sorry y'all I'm out of breath my nose is running I have just now had my coffee. Just now. I well, <laughs> this is my third try. Finish this. Uh, I can't even remember where I was now. If I repeat something, y'all, just, you know, chalk it up to, okay, I'm, I'm freezing or, or frozen and, and I'm just giddy because I'm excited. I had no idea how blessed I was to have my little cottage out in the country and all my little cats and my space heaters and my coffee cup. And <laughs> I had no idea how good life is. But it's going to be okay. I have some good people out there that express prayers for me and my little animals in my home. I sure do thank you. You make my day so much more blessed than you will ever know. The name of the company that came out is called Dynamic 
electricians, I think, dynamically. Anyway, when they come back, I'm going to show them on my channel. They don't mind. If anybody watching this needs a good company, I mean, listen, they came within one hour of when I called this morning. And uh, Stephanie is who answered the phone and got them on it. And Chris is who came out. And I, I didn't even get the other guy's name. I hate that. I'll get it next time, though. And I thank you both. Both of y'all were wonderful. And Stephanie was wonderful. And the company is wonderful. And I appreciate you more than you will ever know. Anyway, <coughs> not in jail. I have light. I have hot water. I have fantastic blessings. And uh, so that's my story. I told you it was absolutely ridiculous, wasn't it? Oh, did I tell you? I hope I did that I told the lady the story. Yes, 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 I told you. And she said, we'll, we'll take you off and we, and we won't come arrest you. And that's, that's, that's great to know. So I'm going to go and I'm going to try to clean up this kitchen a little bit. And then I'm going to take a shower, a hot, hot shower as soon as my water warms up. And I'm going to get on with my day. I thank you all for checking in with me. I thank you for your prayers and your good wishes and your kind and loving support because without you I have no reason to be on YouTube at all you make it all worthwhile everybody have a great day I hope God is good to you today because he has certainly been good to me I'll see you soon bye bye